live from the Mandalay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's The Cube at IBM Insight 2014. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live inside theCUBE here in Las Vegas for IBM Insights. This is theCUBE where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, co-founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante and Wiki Bondotter, also co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media, my partner in crime here. Two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Our next guest is Nancy Hensley, Director of Strategy Marketing Database and Data Warehouse at IBM. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you. Great to Good see to be you. Here. So Good data to warehousing this. and data fusion, all this stuff, data yep. works, yep. database as a service. Changing the game. Give us the update. What's the, the what's, the, what's the talk of the uh, town here? What's going on in the hallways, <laughs> in the sessions? What's the buzz? Well, there's, I mean, data warehousing has gone through such disruptions in the last decade. It's, it's nothing like it used to be. I mean, gone are the days when we would, getting a data warehouse, and now I'm going to date myself, meant 130 boxes were delivered to your dock and then the swarm of consultants would come and six months later you'd have a data warehouse, right? And uh, the latency wasn't all that great back then. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's really not the case anymore because the, the business just isn't going to tolerate that. It's, so we've had lots of changes. It's not just one thing anymore. Data Warehouse is a collection of capabilities that we call, you know, well, I guess whether you call it the logical data warehouse or whether you call it the big data platform, it's more than just one thing. So it is inclusive of Hadoop and streaming technology um, and in memory and all the things that you would do to modernize your data warehouse. I mean, that wasn't really that the long cloud. ago. That, the cloud, we're going to talk about the cloud. But, the cloud. but that situation that you described. It wasn't. It wasn't that long ago. I, no, do I look that old? No, no, no. Four or five years ago, <laughs> yeah. you were describing actually the state of right. data warehousing and there are some situations where it's probably similar to that, yep. um, although the spending patterns are shifting, right? There's more investment actually going into an analytic architecture more than ever before. I saw a statistic, something like a 71% increase in, in spend. And that's because the ROI is so much better. For every dollar you spend, you get $13 back. So if you're le leveraging analytics, you're going to get that return on your investment. No doubt about it. You just have to be ready to do it. And that's, that's the challenge a lot of our clients face today is being ready. So where are those investments going? They're not, they're not going into the 18 boxes and a zillion consultants and, <laughs> no, they're not. and faster chips and... Well, they're still going into data warehouse appliances. If you look at the growth of the data warehouse market, which is still a growing market, um, the majority of that investment is still going into a data warehouse appliance. So we're still introducing new products there. We just introduced one this week at Insight. A new version of Pure Data for Analytics, the Nintesa system we call Mako. Uh, and the focus there was As not just... The shark? As in Shark, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and the focus there was not just you know, continuing the, the, the theme of simplicity and performance, which is what Natiza was built on, but also secure as well, because obviously that makes the news every day as well. Okay. Be secure. What about sort of the, the traditional data warehouse world and all this new analytics stuff that yep. seems to be coming together? When we talk to clients about the tools that they're using for their big data initiatives, they talk about data integration. Right, And right. they talk about the, 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 the existing data warehouse. Right. And you know, Hadoop's in there, down lower yeah. on the list, yep. and NoSQL's in there, kind yep. of down lower. But those are the top two, by right. far. And I don't know any warehouse customers today that don't have some Hadoop capabilities within their architecture as well. So, it, you know, whether you're using it as an investigative technology, as a, a landing zone, uh, as a storage for your cold data, I think you know, you're going to have several reasons to leverage Hadoop alongside the data warehouse. And, and then the cloud, now we're extending into the cloud. And that's really because while we were able to simplify some with things like in memory, with, which was you know, a lot more easier to use with load and go and data warehouse appliances, there's still a requirement to even go faster. I mean, we're hearing clients saying that they need to get warehouses up for, for in minutes. Like in minutes, new requirements in minutes. Not hours, not not days, minutes. How's the security? How's so. security changing the game a little bit? Because people want, in parallel to the agileness, speed. They also want to minimize incidents and breaches. So right. that's a challenge. How do you guys balance that? 
Well, there's some workloads that are never going to go into the cloud, right? And we hear clients say that all the time. So that's why the hybrid capabilities are going to be really important, so that you have the ability to put the right workload in the right place. So we've, we've talked about this thing we're calling um, the fluid data layer, right? And the idea of the fluid data layer is just that, that you want to have the ability to have your data and your analytics flow like water, right? So that it, it, they're much more accessible, that they're much more portable within the enterprise. Uh, if I develop something on my traditional data warehouse, I may want to move it to the cloud, right? I may want to make it a mobile, something that leverages mobile engagement. And that, that seamless integration is really, really key. So, for example, what we built with the integration between cloud and a dash DB, which we announced this week. Right, right, so that, that's a that, perfect example. I like the notion of a fluid data letter. What I'd like as a customer, I want my, my data transport to cut across my businesses right. so that everybody's using the same sort of you know, the old version of the truth, but I'd like that. But you get the um, level of portability, right? So right, your data is flowing like water, right? And your analytics are highly portable. So are we closer to the single version of the truth? I always thought that <laughs> big data was going to mess us up. Um, I don't know, do we ever get the single version of the truth? I think we just got repositories that helped us leverage the truth. Narrowly, I think we got it. I don't it, know right? if we For ever reporting. got to the single version. <laughs> well, the one that we all agreed was the single version. We got right. there, the CFOs could get there. Right, right. Well, but you have to have a trusted repository, but it may not be a single thing, right? It's going to be several repositories. We were talking about this with Mark, this concept of, you guys don't use this term, but he said he was comfortable with it, this concept of data lake. Yes. What do yeah. you think about that term? It's not in IBM, it's not, you're not inundating us with data lake marketing, which is great. Right. But at the same time, everybody, a lot of customers are using that term. I'm sure you they hear are. it. They are. I think we're, our focus now with the, the three services we announced this week, DataWorks and Dash, uh, um, our focus is more around making data available. So how do we make that so much easier, so much more consumable? And yeah. Obviously the cloud is the best way to do that. Ease so of that use it's is a big feature. Talk right. more about right. that. What, is the, what, what do they want that's easier? Just they, don't, reduce they, don't want the to, they don't have to know, right? Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I'll give you a perfect example. So we have cloud, which is a fantastic database. Uh, and it in itself is built on that fluidity that you can have data anywhere and it's, it doesn't matter, right? And so you can get up there, you could rapidly develop some great mobile applications. And they will be incredibly successful, whether it's a game or an application. Now, you can actually take it one step further, because as, you're all the, as these applications become successful, you're getting all this great data, right, from these new applications. And now what you can do is you can literally shred that data from your JSON data stores in a couple of clicks into DashDB, and then use whatever tool you want to do some analysis so you can leverage it one step further without ever moving it. Seamless integration, you don't care what's going on, the DataWorks is helping you move that data. Uh, you don't really care about anything, you just the fact that you have the ability now to do analytics on data you didn't have that ability to do before in two clicks. So let's talk some more about the cloud, you've mentioned it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the role, what's the importance? Is it to spin up POCs really fast? Is it to say, no, uh -huh. this is where I'm going to run my analytics? Talk about that. I think, um, Cloud with data warehousing is pretty interesting, right? I think it's on everyone's agenda to look into because it's all around speed. And I also think it's also about self-service. When you think about how you need to meet the needs of the business, sometimes you just have to let the business have accessible data to, to mess around with, to do some discovery work. And it's difficult to do that in a data warehouse to provision it quickly enough there's some sort of short-term an analytics that they may want to do, some what-if analysis, maybe there's some trend in fashion that they want to take advantage of. It's very difficult in a traditional data warehouse to provision something quickly and give them quick access. Whereas I can, I can have my client provision a cloud in, in minutes. They can do what they need to do and then it's, it's almost highly disposable. And if, it's, and if we find something we want to put in production, we can pull it back on on the infrastructure or put in production on the cloud. And I'll get my same security model? Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, of course, so there's, like I said, there's customers that, based on the data and the compliance and the rules and regulations that they have, some workloads are just not going to go, right? Why but IBM? Yet. Why, I, why, why IBM? Because we, we're not just putting things in the cloud, <laughs> we're looking to actually change that experience which is different than just saying, hey, I now have a data warehouse in a cloud. We're actually thinking through, we talked about the fluid data layer. 
what's really going to make a difference for an organization. And it's about making that data accessible, making the analytics portable. It's not just about the ability to connect things from your cloud to your hybrid infrastructure. It's about making it extremely simple and very, very fast. So simple to set up and have access uh, and very fast in terms of the performance of the analytics themselves. So DashDB's got in-memory column R capability. And that's the difference. And having that full suite of capabilities from the ability to acquire data, which is where most people end up spending their time, to you know, the portability of the analytics from your uh, hybrid infrastructure to the cloud, and then all the capabilities that we have on the cloud today. And then also connecting up some of the things like we've done with cloud just making it very fluid. Explain the cloud in piece, because that's something that was an acquisition. People were like, oh, that's a mm -hmm. good purchase. They were well-respected. Bunch Absolutely. of geeks from MIT. Yes. Good guys, we've been following them since they broke out when they launched on SiliconANGLE. We just started, we just started SiliconANGLE. Mm -hmm. And they were just, you know, a bunch of guys, and this is before it was fashionable to be database as a service. That's right. So it's basically in the front end of the NoSQL. But right. obviously coming into IBM, what has that done for IBM, and what have you guys done with these guys? Well, I mean, I think everybody will agree that there's this massive growth of mobile applications, right? This is, the way we engage with our clients, almost every business has changed the boundaries of engagement to be very mobile focused. So this is, I mean, you walk around, everybody around here has a phone in their hand or a tablet or a phablet or whatever it is that they have. This is, this is the way people want to engage with most organizations. So, um, Cloudin has been a great acquisition for us because they get it. They have, allow you to have very rapid development of these mobile applications. Um, and it, we have this great distributed capability so you can have your data in different places like whether it's on Amazon or Azure and it, it doesn't matter. It's so simple, it's so rapid and fast. And now um, you can take it one step further and have the warehouse. When you look on clouded.com this week, you'll see it says, hello warehouse. And a few clicks you can move that data to a warehouse. And so it's really, but it's one piece of the puzzle on the overall customer right. solution. So where would a customer use cloud and where would they stay on premise and what's the mix and match? It's really going to be a, a, a preference for that customer. But when you think about our corporate strategy, data, cloud, yeah. engage, right? So we have the data piece. We've had the data piece for years. We continue to build and we've refreshed almost our entire data management portfolio this year. So you look at what we've done with DB2 and the capabilities we've built in to be able to do operational analytics. You could do analytics right in your transactional database now without affecting the performance of the transaction. So that's enabling real-time insight like never before. That's been refreshed. Our data warehouse appliances with Mako and now making that more yeah. secure and faster, that's been refreshed. The announcement of our cloud data warehouse. So, um, so that's the data piece, right? And in the cloud, as you can see, we're moving quickly into the cloud, faster than ever before. And then the engagement part, this is where Cloudin helps us out. It's so one of the things that we were chatting with Jeff Jonas and others is this social data. We love the word engagement, so that's what we live with, our CrowdChat product and, and the things we're building there. Um, and, and so it's very valuable, the active mm -hmm. social data. And he, and he Choso was mentioning that in our TED at IBM talk, which was active data, yep. active data is first party data, it's actually relevant in real time, in the right. moment, we're hearing right. immersive experiences. These are the things we're hearing at this conference. This is cutting edge oh, yeah. uh, engagement Absolutely. data. So the data's at the front end, it affects customers and they're connected. So and their ability to, to leverage it. Yes, yeah, so what is social data? It. Break that down social for us. Data. What is, I mean, because if, <laughs> if, and Jeff Jonas nailed it, I mean, people are internet of things, they're connected, right. so they're just another data source into the system. Right. Um, but they're humans, so okay, right. that's data, they're streaming their life and then right. tweeting in, in an observation space. And oh my gosh, it, it can be everything. I mean, it, I don't know if you guys are where the wearables, right? So I have two, because I am a data geek. <laughs> not You're not A-B testing is, your health? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, got my Fitbit versus my, my Garmin, but you're right, it is all about, I think we're quickly moving more to the conversations around the internet of things, because everything is being so much more in instrumented. Yeah. And then the ability to capture that data on the edge, which, um, in, I don't know if you know that, but our Informix capabilities, which is a highly embeddable database. Is, is what, uh, highly what? Informix, very yeah. embeddable, right? So oh, that's yeah, sure. been, so Informix is playing a big role on the edge in terms of being embedded in these devices, and we're going to see lots of change coming in the next few months. Um, we, in fact, we just had a, a press release with uh, HP around their ARM technology having Informix now. So I think the ability to capture all of that data is just going to explode in terms of what we can do with it. And, and social data, you know, you're talking about Facebook and Twitter and the ability to actually have a deeper understanding yeah. of 
your clients likes, dislikes what they're doing, like, like never before, and how you use that data to drive more targeted campaigns. But it's that feeds also into the benefit that we, we were hearing earlier in day one, which is machine learning is this fabric mm -hmm. on underneath it. So you got the infrastructure on the data warehouse side, right. the data layers, you got cloud, and you got right. data works, you got all this new middleware, if you will, for lack of a better description, yep. software. Yep feeding in, in with it active data so you can actually make better software. Yeah. That seems to be the right model, do you agree? Right. Yeah, and, and that kind of goes back to the data warehouse architecture now has become this collection of things that's inclusive of all this capability, right? And I think that's how clients are modernizing is they have to pick their starting point within that. So it may be I need to bring in social data. It may be that I, I need to pull in in memory capability just to really accelerate the analytics I have. Maybe I need a data, war data warehouse appliance to just reduce the complexity I have in my traditional reporting and analytics and some of my deep capability. And maybe that I need to be able to have unstructured capability with Hadoop and do some of the machine analytics. I mean, you have to pick your, your starting point and start to build this together. So Nancy, another dynamic of the, tr the old data warehouse businesses, I had to go mm -hmm. through some super analyst to get my data. And, right. and I had to give him or her a long runway um, yep. And I really didn't have access to the data. I could right. get an output, you know, an Excel or something or a CSV and play around with the data. How has that changed? Well, that, actually the cloud's probably changing that the most because the cloud is going to enable self-service like never before. Because all of that is, you know, is very seamless to the user. I mean, I, I, I keep joking around that I'm actually going to film my mother creating a warehouse, my 87-year-old mother creating a warehouse from cloud into Dash DB. Does she know what a data warehouse is? It doesn't matter, <laughs> she, I guess. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, but it's, the point is, is that you will be able to empower somebody who doesn't really care about the technology in the data warehouse. The fact is, is that they have questions they want to ask of a data set. They don't really care where the data's coming from. It's like water, you turn on the faucet, you expect the water to flow, you expect it to be clean and trusted, it's not going to make you sick. We need to have that same expectation with data in our enterprises, and that is what's going to move us forward. When we can actually have data and analytics to everyone, that's, that's when we win. Some data's pretty polluted. What are you, what are you seeing <laughs> yeah. in terms of data quality and flowing like water. What kind of dirty water? Right. Is well, it, it could be well, dirty water, is it well, clean Well, what about water? data quality, yeah. data governance? You have you to know. have it. I mean, it, do, it doesn't go away, you can't give that up because you're offering self-service, because then you're of, creating lots of problems. But a lot of organizations are spinning up these data projects with no sort of well, edicts around data governance. Because nobody likes to talk about that, right? That's I the know, boring but it's happening, stuff. so. I, it, That's why it has to be more seamlessly integrated. That's what, why DataWorks is so important, is nobody wants to talk about it. Marketing people don't like to talk about that <laughs> stuff because it's <laughs> ugly, but it's true. I mean, well, no, even a company, like when you, you Well, know, that's true too, right? right. If, when you go to try and get it funded, and the you're talking about security and governance, so yeah, the business yeah. says, yeah, I don't think so, right? I want my shiny new toy, I want my Watson Analytics, right? That stuff gets them excited. It's the behind the scenes things they don't really care about, but it has to be there. Well, so how are they dealing with that? I mean, just as soon as you say it has to be there, you're saying IBM's you, dealing you, with that through but integration? We are or? building all out of that in seamlessly. So like that example I gave you when I'm moving data from my cloud and store to Dash DB, that's data works working behind the scenes to keep it clean, to keep the quality up, right? Um, and, I, and as a user, I'm not going to know that. So it, you want to offer self-service capabilities, so that's but you want to still maintain control of the but data and the metadata. So that's policy driven? I mean, I can yeah, inject my yeah, definition of absolutely. quality into You your want system. to take a lot of the standards you have for your, infos, your, your uh, private cloud, if you will, your, your on-site infrastructure, on-premises, mm -hmm. and apply a lot of that to the cloud. But you can't, you can't just give all that up. On premises, I caught that. On premises, yes. See, I know, that I makes was me correct. an official cloud person when I was I say that. I was corrected the other day, is it's on premises, Sorry, Dave, now not you're on premise, cloud premises of theory. <laughs> I noticed Steve Mills used the term premise too, and a smart guy like that we'll, can we'll use premise, we'll, I can too. We'll so. tell him later. <laughs> on prem, we'll call it on prem. <laughs> on prem, that's a short one, <laughs> exactly. So it's a, it's exciting time, yeah. a lot happening. Awesome, well thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate Thank it, you. we think data is awesome, and of course we have the crowd chat thing, the active data, and I think that there's a tsunami, we, we didn't yeah. get a chance to talk about it, I wish we had more time. The web created digital, and the digital yeah. transformation with social, and the social business has really got the right angle on it. I really think you guys have that right, 100%, is that, and so early on, it's going to be mm -hmm. about data-driven, data-driven enterprises, and it's going to be in all aspects. The internet of everything. It really is the right <laughs> vision. Social business is going to be about yeah. the data and the people and the relationships. So again, it's going to be, you got to store it somewhere. And giving the data to the people. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> think, that, Dave, I don't think storage is going anywhere soon. No, so storage so. is going to be around for a while. This is theCUBE, we are here live in the Social Media Lounge, IBM really has an amazing digital experience theater here in the Social Lounge. The Cube was a big special presentation and great job. It's called Insight Go. We're here in theCUBE live at IBM Insight in Las Vegas. We'll be right back after this short break.